Hey folks, I just put out a video not long ago, it was a three hour video, and in that video there was a little bit of a segment of something cool that I wanted to offer as a tutorial for any of you folks who didn't know this little technique. Anyway, what it has to do with is adding a user imp uh, waypoints to your established routing. So, as an example, we're here in Everett, I'm sorry, we're here at SeaTac Airport. We're out, I'm at one of the cargo loading areas. I was parked at the terminal, but it was kind of noisy over there. <laughs> but that's the rest of SeaTac. It's a beautiful day. Here I am parked at one of the uh, cargo spots, and I've got my route all plugged into the FMC. I've got the uh, plan page up here on the display. So I'm going to step through the waypoints. Here I am in Seattle. We're heading north. Top of, the cl top of climb comes pretty fast. Our first waypoint is Payne, PAE, Snohomish County Airport. And then we're heading to Canada, CYVR, Vancouver International Airport. We've got a couple of waypoints. And then we go into this extended downwind. And uh, we're going to go into downwind, base, and then final. And on, it's part, part of the procedure. It's part of the grizzle, the grizzle one procedure, I think is what it's called. Anyway, so let's say you're kind of new, or let's say you like to give yourself a nice long um, arrival. Nice long time on final to get established. So what I would like to do is show you how you can add two waypoints. What we want to do is add a waypoint, so we're, this is the downwind, to NACMA. I want to add a waypoint out to the west of it to extend our downwind, and then I want to add another waypoint prior to bubble to expend, extend our final. So let's see if we can do this. Uh, NACMA uh, it's, you're on a 269 heading on the way into NACMA. So what I want to do is to um, let's see if I get this correct. I'm going to select NACMA and I'm going to type in 269 because I want the new waypoint to be in the same direction heading west and I'm going to say slash 5 miles I'm going to say 05 05 slash 5 miles now what I want the flight computer to do is to create a new waypoint based on NACMA 269 radial as if NACMA were a, a nav aid 269 radio from NACMA, five miles out. So I'm going to put it right at, actually I'm going to put it at bubble, because I want it after NACMA. So let's put it at bubble. I'm going to say, okay, here's what's happened. Take a look at what's happened. So now we have a new waypoint, a user-defined waypoint, NAC01. It comes after NACMA. You can see here's where it is. And then, and then there's a discontinuity and then there's bubble. So what I want to do is remove the discontinuity by selecting bubble and then filling in the spot. And now you can see if you look up at the display, it has not approved it yet because we didn't push execute, but you can see what this has now done. It has created an extension of NACMA on the same radio, 269, five miles out, and now we have NACMA. I'm going to push execute. Now that's in there. Now, let's say, now that, that would be fine in, a, in and of itself, but let's say you now want another waypoint five miles back from bubble, so you can um, have a longer final in to uh, YVR. So bubble is at a 089 and 
what I'll ask you to do is to find the reciprocal of that. Now, the reciprocal is 180 degrees. You can either add 180 or you can subtract 180. In this case, I think it's easier to add. What I like to do is, instead of adding 180, it's kind of awkward, I add 200, that brings it to 283, and then I subtract 20, so 263. So I'm going to uh, select bubble, type in 263, which is the reciprocal of 183, and I'm going to put a slash, and then the distance, 05. And I want it to come after uh, NACMA, NAC, NAC, after NACO 1. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. What, what if I put it... Okay, bubble, 263, 263, slash... 05. Now I'm going to put it right on top of bubble. That's what I want. Now see what happens? We go from NACMA, we go five miles beyond to this new user defined waypoint, NAC01. That's the one we created earlier. Now we're going to the one we just created off of the reciprocal of the inbound radial from bubble and that's bub1 so nat1 and bub1 those are both user defined and I'm going to push execute and I'm going to get rid of the discontinuity select bubble oops don't worry about that steep descent stuff uh, that was there long before I started to fiddle around so that, that, don't worry about that uh, previous page, and I'm going to put bubble right there in the discontinuity, and execute. Now let's, uh, let's, pay, pay, let's get a little range here. So you can see. Okay, so now you can see that we've added five miles out and five miles in extended the downwind, and we've extended the final. A couple of caveats to know about this. These new user-defined waypoints don't have constraints. So if you go to data, and you can see the constraints that are uh, listed with these waypoints. Some of them have altitude restrictions. These new waypoints don't have those altitude restrictions. So, be, so basically, if you're on a, a certain altitude at, ba, at uh, the first one, Babel, or whatever it was, Baba, you want to go ahead and uh, maintain your altitude. Now, because we added two of them, we added distance, it's actually going to be easier for you to comply with those constraints. See, the 6,000-foot constraint at NACMA and the 4,500 constraint at bubble, but these two waypoints don't have constraints. So instead of having to drop 1,500 feet in five miles in that short of time, now you've got 10 miles or so, uh, 13 miles or so, probably about 13 miles or so, to drop that same amount of altitude. So that's the first caveat. There are no constraints in these two waypoints. And the second caveat you need to remember is this is not part of the published procedure. The procedure says go to NACBA and then go to bubble. So the air traffic, if you're strictly following the procedure, the air traffic control controller is going to look at you. He's going to expect you to follow the procedure and to turn at NACBA. Uh, so what I would do is I would uh, request uh, deviation and Controllers love this. If you say for spacing or for separation, anytime you can help them a little bit, they, they love it. Now, of course, if the traffic environment is busy and they're de depending on you to follow a procedure for their own definition of spacing, then you would uh, 
certainly take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, it doesn't prevent you from turning a NACMA. You can, you can certainly turn a NACMA and go to bubble on the established procedure. But by having this in the FMC, you can now use the autopilot to extend your downwind and to extend your final and give you just that little bit of extra time to prepare. So, I hope this has been useful. I'm going to try to make another video on the Airbus, but this should work on all Boeing aircraft, all uh, Embraer aircraft, all CRJ, the Canada Regional Jet aircraft, and some others um, that have a similar, I believe this is a Honeywell uh, FMC, but uh, anything with a similar system. Okay, so I'll let you know, and I hope that was enjoyable, and I hope it has, um, you can put it to good use. Have a great day.